always run in that same way. All we got to do is get them out of the way. You don't care about the way. You get them out of the way. You got to have them. 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 You got to write them on them. And give a great big pick and count and welcome to the next governor of Alabama, Governor George C. Wayne. Thank you, Governor. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I really didn't anticipate such a crowd as this. Uh, uh, Dale Lane here, who's a candidate for probate judge, and I'm going to ask people. Alabama. Third, we need jobs. And in 1972, I ran. Well, I ran for the presidency, and you say, well, what does 1982 have to do with 72? Here's what it has to do with it. In Indiana, Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania, and Ohio, because they like what you are saying. And, but unless they do stop these unfair trade practices, we predict to you that in a decade, and that's 1982, their jobs connected with auto, steel, textile, and the matter of shoes. The shoe industry has gone completely out of business. We don't know him outside of Harley, Montgomery, Alabama. And so I, I want you to take advantage of that. Oh, they say, well, you're in a wheelchair. Well, so what? I was governor seven years in a wheelchair. Well, the trouble in our country has been that we've had so many people in Washington in the last 10, 20, 30 years who were paralyzed in the head. I want to more than myself. But we've let it get away from us because we have some federal judges that have turned people loose. And those who have suffered more than anybody else have been the black citizens of Alabama in the matter of crime. I want to do what I can about it. I'll do the best I can. But we've had some federal judges in this state uh, and country that have made it almost impossible uh, to make you safe on the streets and highways. But I believe someday that's coming to an end because when I ran for the presidency, I said, let <laughs> But my friend, my friend will tell you this. Please do not come complacent and refuse to vote on that day. Say, well, he's got it won because we haven't got it won until the night of the election of the, uh, November the 2nd. We must go out and vote because there is going to be much money spent in the next few days on the matter of television, radio, and newspaper ads, uh, which we, the Democrats, cannot uh, match. Uh, we have found the junior college here in Fayette and the one in Andalusia, Alabama. <laughs> because when I went in the gut, when I went to college back our state, did not have the opportunity <coughs> to obtain an education for that child or uh, children. Uh, and therefore, uh, when I became the governor in 1963, I said, we're going to stop. That college told me that no more than 1,000 of those young people would have got an education of that sort had it not been for that particular school. We not only have you not run for governor. <laughs> It's because the polls show I can win. That's one, that's good enough, the reason to run. The second, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm unemployed too, like so many. Last the governor's office, we dropped it on the 27th on the Alexander Report, another prestigious report, and we are last in the Southeast. And today we have the second highest unemployment rate in the time of election. I'm not going to wait till I'm inaugurated governor of Alabama. I know you approve of that. <laughs> I want, all I ask you to do is you just think about, we got the same kind of folks running for government again against me that, you know, I said.
Comprehensive Cancer Clinic and Lurling Byrne Wallace Clinic uh, in the uh, University. We're going to win, too, Governor. Thank you, thank you, Governor. As he says, every step left office, it drops to number 27. During the eight years that I was governor of Alabama, the Southeast had new and expanded industry and jobs. We were struck up twice. Both parties and their camps say the same thing. Are we going to have this to take place that I told you they predicted? Uh, my work, and I remember the General Motors president said to this, Governor, because of you taking this stand, the next selling plant we build, industries by the people who are unemployed in this state of Alabama, and I believe you want me to do that, then I'm going to do it. Because they know who you are. And as a result of you making me known by letting me run for the board, <laughs> during the depression, during the depression, the person in Alabama to drive there and come back and live at home. And you've had hundreds of students that have gone, not only this tech school, the yes, man came. And you know, he said, I want to inter interview you. He came to Tuskegee. That's the, uh, having the Black Mayor's Conference. He said, what are you doing over here? Hey, baby. Hey, <laughs> also, when I went to, when I went to school in the white in this state, to go get a tech school or a junior college education. So when I became the gun, we built these schools, and you've got children. <laughs> Alabama, and I discussed this matter with 
Bill Duke and other legislators. He's now he's a mayor Duke and the legislators of this area. Because we are but I do know that in the matter of industry, we were announcing a multi hundred million dollar industry almost every month when I was governor of Alabama and a big industry in this section of Alabama in the great Tennessee Valley area. And I'm going to continue to work on the Tennessee Tom Baby Waterway, which I was president two times, and the first time we got our first construction grant. We also, we're also going to expand the state dock. We have a bright future in this state, even though exactly what's happened, my friends, because this country has got a wide open door. Japan and West Germany, the other country got a closed door. They don't treat us fair. But I'm going to speak out as a governor that's known, say you treat us fair in Washington on this matter. You look after the farmers of our country, and I'll tell you another thing. There's no reason for you to put TVA rates so high that you're about to run all the industry out of the Tennessee Valley Authority. My friend, the TVA, the TVA used to be a great uh, measuring matter for the matter of uh, electricity. But just like any other government bureau, it is overgrown, overspent, overbuilt, and today they put the cost to you. The other day, Mr. Reagan, out on this work release program they have, they make money, you get jobs. Everybody that's victimized by a criminal, we're going to set up a restitution board, and whatever money they make, they're going to pay whatever they got to try to pay you back for the damage you suffered. <laughs> Uh, as far as your profit is concerned, and that is not only going to be tried in Alabama, it's going to be tried in a number of other states. So my friends, it's nothing new, it's just that we not have not enforced it in the past, but I want to enforce it for the simple reason, I want to see those who commit crime, and when they get out of prison, if they put you in the hospital and you've got a big hospital bill yet to pay, I want them as long as they live in Alabama, they're going to pay some of that money to you every week they make it in order to repay you for what they owe you for the crime they committed against you. And this is something that's going to be new in several states in, that, in Alabama and several other states, but it's not going to be the only state that's going to do it. It's time has come, and we're going to see it come to being during George Wallace's administration. But the first thing I'm going to do, my friends, is hunt jobs, jobs, jobs. <laughs> Uh, my friends, I appreciate you being here tonight. These taxes only by people voting on them or your legislative voting on them or your city commission or your county governing body. No, there'll be new, new taxes on Alabama's consumers when I'm governor of Alabama. My friends, I thank you for being here today. I'm sorry that we are late. Sorry about my laryngitis, but we've had big crowds and that's very good. But I'll tell you what.
We saw a nice nationwide, but we're going to do our part in Alabama. So I want to tell the people of Alabama that we're not going to do away with Medicaid or close the nursing homes, and we're not going to close schools uh, next year when I become the governor, as been predicted by some. Alabama schools are not going to close before the end of the regular session. Anyway. I think that would be. Thank you for inviting Pickens County and Fayette County. There was a straw poll, I understand, taken of that group, and over 95% of them supported your George C. Wallace.
college education is concerned from the kindergarten level to the graduate level. Now, I think Paul could tell you that before he was executive secretary of the year, any other time in our was history because we double the budget to education the first year I was governor from the year when I became the governor, the education budget was $149 million. Today, I can't it enough. I don't have to tell you about my record and what I will do in the future. <laughs> Any other candidate running for governor could have laryngitis too. If he I want to leave you with this thought in mind that we're all in the same boat in this. Speak to us this time. Thank you, Brother Gachet. Now, I want to first tell you that I have laryngitis, but I'm not sick. I will tell the newsmen, women that. But I've spoken to such large crowds in the last week in North Alabama, I lost my voice, folks, but I'm all right. I'll be able to speak after the election. <laughs> I hope you will speak. <laughs> you know, I appreciate very much the fact that I carried Barber County with such a good large vote and the surrounding counties. You know, when the people back home give you an opportunity as you gave me back in 1946, the only reason I ever got elected governor of Alabama was first the people of my county elected me to the legislature. And I wanted to wind up the campaign here in Barber County and Clow, my hometown. But I didn't want you to think, though, that I am sick because I got laryngitis. You've heard of laryngitis. Many of you have had it, you know. But I do appreciate the fact that every time I've run for governor, I've always carried the county. And someone said, well, why don't you go to some other section of the state on this date? For the simple reason, many places you haven't been. I said, we're going to win the election, provided the people get out and vote, because the poll shows Alabama, and I'm going to do the best I can to be, make you a good governor again with the help of the Lord. Thank you very much, my good friend, here in Southeast Alabama. And thank you so much, Governor Wallace, for coming. For the people here in this state, we truly appreciate it. Now, uh, just before we call on them buggies to come back here, I believe we have maybe another elected official from Barber County. Where is our Sheriff Robert Smith? I told him. Right. I just like to play the pleasure to be down here with such a wonderful crowd today. and they realign the politics in Alabama to the extent that we're not going to have the Alabama Democratic Party, which has done more of this state than any re Alabama Republican Party has ever done, they ever will do. Now, <laughs> is it during the last few days we've spoken a great number of times, which we have advertised six places on one day in the middle of this week, but I'm not my good friend Ruben asked you, you know, I went uh, down to see Ruben in 1972. We've known each other a long time. He's been one of the finest governors of any state in the Union. He's also a man that is interested, I think, in uh, seeking you, you, Ruben, that I've never met a finer, more intelligent, brilliant. Uh, all the help you want to in the matter of automobiles and carrying people to vote. What I want to see is that Democrats match that voluntarily by doing the same thing because this election could be lost only if people decided <clears throat> it's one that why I'm too busy today and I cannot vote. So it's good to be the head of your ticket there. So about 2,500 people <clears throat> at Chitlin, Chitlin Day in my hometown of Clark have to close. But I want to tell the people of this day, and tell you who assembled here tonight, that I'm not... <laughs> I, uh, I did want to welcome the governor of Florida who wanted to be elected to in Florida. But I think he's thinking about bigger things, but uh, Ruben... <laughs> Governor, my 
daddy always told me, and you know as as good then than when he was first elected, and that's saying a lot for a governor. Governor Askew was also honored by the National Governors Association by all of the governors and the President Jimmy Carter. Governor Askew practices law at the present time.